Hi, I'm Alicia and I'm currently in first grade of bilingual primary education at the University of Murcia in Spain. This is my exam for the subject school organization and diversity. So without further ado, let's get started. As far as I'm concerned, relationships are the main cause of complexity within an organization. Therefore, we must see how the current law affects them, even if the law with long law law has been an attempt to turn around the world law without an state pact. This law seeks the improvement of results and achievement, as well as motivation, highlighting the turn students' connections. We are also influenced by our classmates, so peer connections are important, as well as a special tutor in for professor. I've noticed how much it influences the connections within the learning context, as it seeks innovation within the educational system, as well as renovation of culture and values. I cannot stress how important it is to take into account students' assessments to understand their needs and take the necessary ordinary and extraordinary steps so it's linked to the and we acquire through our learning connection, just as meaningful knowledge that can be taken to the labor market that goes far beyond the classroom. Taking advantage of the digital changes and sustainability, along with the implication of the whole educational community. As I've learned in this course, I usually believe that it's impossible to design an ideal learning community, as learning is something that emerges through connections. Therefore, now I know that schools are complex systems because they depend on many elements whose decisions matter. If one changes, the whole system does, which I would identify as the main point of complexity. I actually see eye to eye with Lewin, who understood learning as the results of the interactions among individuals and their environment. While I deeply believe the person's context to be a great enrichment tool, I get that it can be an issue when forming new learning communities, as culture is one of its main organizational factors. Course structure can be introduced through technology, of course, but then should we sacrifice textbooks. I think that this is where democratization of knowledge comes handy. How much accessible has it truly become? Some students lack internet connection. We must be aware of the different options we have, focusing on them instead of falling in redundancy. When this term comes to my mind, I immediately think of learners' own learning program. But as Paul et al. stated, students' preferences matter. What about bigger problems? We couldn't predict COVID-19, so as teachers we must react to these situations, balancing random names and routines. As the principal, my program would be focused on achieving inclusive education through the consensus of all family and staff members. Thus, I would follow a participative leadership with hints of transformational leadership, focusing on creativity and the process instead of the end result. Students would be grouped according to the desired activities, not by their ability levels, but rather regrouping them for a couple of subjects so they remain in an heterogeneous group throughout the most part of the day, which is encouraged by cooperative learning among small groups. Then I would foster their reflective thought, as they we claimed. Students are put together in flexible cross-age groups, known as non graded plans, in which they obtain overall positive results. Results. For instance, the Dublin plan groups them for reading regardless of their grade levels. This results in a more personalized learning experience as shown in the fourth leadership style. People with the same IQ can be extremely different. Therefore, I will offer gift programs. This is a clear example of diversity, an example of participative leadership. Thus, we must avoid authoritarian leadership, which is the one that Logi established and the one that he received from his father. Moving on to the second part of the exam, I would say 9, as I truly given my best on the subject, following all the steps that the activities require, and overall hopefully providing my group with a nice and hardworking person I aim to be. I actually believe that thanks to the subject, I've acquired a more holistic view of what teaching consists of, going far beyond the activity of learning and teaching per se. Instead, something that has made a lasting impression on me would be how diverse and mixed reality truly is, and I think that's beautiful. There's plenty of them, actually. For instance, I've got familiar with a new walking technique called Petsakte. I've always been aware of the different styles people take when teaching, but thanks to the subject, I've realized that they actually have a name, and there are four leadership styles. In order to become a good teacher, I think it's important to take into account the three main objectives of basic education, which are professionalization, socialization, and subjectification, according to Jörg Biesta. As I needed to go through the documents again, I feel like now I've dug further into the matter, achieving a deeper understanding of its element we've studied so far. I'm afraid that's all the time I have for this video, so thank you so much for watching.